All Americans must have the privileges of citizenship, regardless of race. And they are going to have those privileges of citizenship, regardless of race. The climate in Milwaukee, 68, was tense. Not just because Dr. King had been killed, but more because of the open housing marches that were being led by Father Grappi. We are very concerned about the attitude and the conduct of the mayor of the city of Milwaukee. Well, for heaven's sake, we have a right to exercise our constitutional God-given right of free speech. That means protest, demonstration, whenever we want. There were only 50 black students at Marquette, and they decided they were going to withdraw from the university. Colleges across the country were feeling pressure to open up and to serve low-income and, and particularly African-American students. That was the beginning of my journey, and so they offered me the job, and, and I took it. This was a radical experiment. I told them I'd give them five semesters, and of course, five semesters, it turned out to be a lifetime. We are the only organization that, that truly represents only low-income first-generation students in their aspirations to go to college. Well, the challenges were, you know, some students obviously came in uh, not with the level of skills that you would have hoped. Given the fact that it started in the 60s during a very turbulent time, I think Dr. Mitchum uh, mentioned to me once that it was more thought of as an experiment, if you will. We're far beyond an experiment now. We, we know that this works. We're really trying to prepare them to succeed. Not only prepare them, you know, here's the material that you have to know, but really, what are the skills that you need to succeed in college? When Marquette sent me that acceptance letter, I was like, maybe this is an opportunity, another chance for me to start over and start on the right path instead of going down where I was. It gave me hope. For the students who were able to come through Marquette because of ELP, it changed the trajectory of their lives and their families. Everyone that kind of goes through EOP has that feeling to give back. People give of themselves so you have the opportunity to do the same for someone else. I'm coming from Thailand. I live in a refugee camp, Watanga Ball. The education there is not uh, really good at all. And I'm really proud to be a gay millennial scholar. I want to become like a double mate for the United Nations. When you think about a program like TRIO, in particular the pre-college program, you think, well, it's helping one student. Um, but it's beyond that. I think that TRIO moves families forward. I think EOP were pioneers. But when I walk around the city, I see all kinds of people that I went to school with in the Upper Bound, or students that was in Upper Bound program when I worked there. And you, you see students all over the country. You see ba basketball players, doctors, lawyers, all around people that's really took it, they heard it, they saw something, and they start to work towards their dream, and they got there. Right off the bat, you are treated like family. The staff know who you are. They take an interest in your development. And so from day one, I felt like I was in an environment where everyone wanted me to succeed, so why would I pick to go anywhere else? And the thing that I really worry about today is that it's no longer true that each successive generation is going to be better off than the previous generation. And that programs like EOP must continue because if not, then we're going to lose some of the levers that we have to try to make it better for each generation. Marquette gave me the opportunity to make myself better. Like, if it wasn't for Marquette, I don't know where I would be. So, so what else have we lost because we don't develop all of our talent? Aren't human beings our natural resource? Mm -hmm.